Welcome, everybody, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Fillmore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me for this sad occasion is Sam. How are you, Sam? Hi. I'm good. Well, you know, I miss Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. We, we did this, something similar for Norm MacDonald. And we, I managed to get it out much earlier because we had recorded it earlier in the week. And I kind of put it out real fast. And this one, I have record time to be able to put it in. And um, we weren't as up on it because I needed to get loads of clips because there's so much Gilbert to go through. And with Norm, yeah. uh, a little easier because um, it, I had a lot of those clips already. With Gilbert, I had to edit a lot. And um, he was just so fucking goddamn funny. I, I, I can't explain it. You went to see him twice and you said he killed both times. He killed both times. And he's just the type of comic that it's like he doesn't he does he does it for the audience, but he does it for himself. Like you could see he's entertaining himself yes. while he's doing things. Like he put a bowl on his head and started doing the Hebrew yes. just out of nowhere. And I my dad and I could not <laughs> even fucking breathe. We were front row to like right in this like kind of intimate comedy club. Yeah. I was fucking crying. And my dad and I have really loud laughs. I don't know if anybody has noticed this about me, but okay. <laughs> my dad is similar. And yeah. when he gets rolling, he can't stop. So we were both like in tears. It was amazing. Yeah. And then I got to uh, go and get uh, my dad said, oh, you got to get his book and you got to have him sign it because he does, you know, pictures and everything, of course, for a price because Gilbert's not doing anything for free. No. And so I got pictures with him and a signed book and he was great. Yeah. So we've got a mix, guys, of uh, video and audio. And our condolences, obviously, to Dara and Max and Lily, his youngsters. And of course, so his surviving cute. Karen, uh, surviving sister Karen. Um, if those of you, and you're right, the kids are just like, they're a picture of kids. They're just gorgeous. And the wife is gorgeous, too. She's really, really stunningly beautiful. Um, for those of you who guys who haven't seen, um, the documentary Gilbert released in 2017, I wholeheartedly recommend it. It humanizes him and it actually adds so much more. Um, it's just really revealing actually in a way, because it, Sam was just talking about how Bill Maher went on, um, Colbert or, or Kimmel. It was Kimmel. Okay. And he talked about how he really didn't know him, even though he knew him for 40 years. But um, if you watch the documentary, that will become a little uh, easier to understand why. He was just a very private person. You know, from that documentary made me realize Howard has had him on so many times. Mm -hmm. And what a shame that because he's such a poor interviewer and because he's only stuck on these few facets of Gilbert. Right. He couldn't. He couldn't pry open any more information on him because one wigtard's not interested, no. and because he just wants to be told the same story over and over again, which became boring for the listeners. And yeah. you know, I'm sure it's boring for Gilbert. Yeah, I'm cheap. Yeah, I take the bus. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the Go Go's concert I got thrown out at for calling the aunt's concert doors cunts. Yeah, oh, the tsunami joke. I got fired. Got it. Okay. Right. I got getting <laughs> married. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you're right. There was a there was a point of like diminishing returns with Gilbert, and then after Artie was gone, then he had no one really to riff with anymore. And him and Artie together, even post Stern when he wasn't allowed on, they were phenomenal. The show he did on Gilbert's podcast, he did Artie did Gilbert's podcast twice, and Gilbert did Artie's show, and that's where we got those Ellen clips that we're going to play yeah. um, no, when, they, they loved when, each other oh they did and that's Gilbert and Artie are my favorite together because it, it does remind you of when you have that friend you know you have that connection and anytime you see them you know you're going to be laughing and joking and making fun of people the whole time and it's oh, the totally. best right <laughs> and, what, and what I've included guys we'll play the clips and I'm not sure how long this will go but one of the um, one of the things I wanted to include was people giving him props and uh, some of them are a little long so we'll try to play them through as much as we can with all the the you know the pauses we have to do just for the copyright shit so the first one i'm going to play is from gilbert's own podcast it was a dave thomas story about gilbert at a thing for i don't know planet earth like earth day type of thing so here's the <laughs> here's the dave thomas with the story Which it's about i think it was yesterday wasn't it I, I think it was. You're right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called. It's just a. It's a Joe Episcopo story. So Brendan Flaherty, you're Flaherty, you're gonna love this one. Just 
caddy corner to the Brill Building in New York, an Italian place. And it had a little kind of a vestibule where you go in before you get to the restaurant and you can hang your coat. And there's photos of all the stars there. And there's a photo of Joe Piscopo as Frank. And then it's to Tony or whoever the owner of the restaurant was. To Tony, you are a kooky, kooky guy. Love Joe Piscopo. And then in brackets, almost Frank. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can let it play through. I saw that. I almost threw up in the vest, you beer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, cut to Toronto. You're there, Gilbert. Yes. I'm there. I took a free plane ride. Joe Piscopo's the MC. He starts by taking a boom box and putting it on the, on the, on the dais. And he goes, you know, okay, here we go, guys. Wherever I go all over the world... You know, uh, people always come up to me and they say, Joe, do your Frank. <laughs> so without, <laughs> without any further ado, and he hits the boom box and you are the sunshine of oh. my life. Whatever it was you singing. And, you know, for about eight or ten bars, it's not bad. But because Joe is never satisfied with something that's just good, <laughs> he has to go and make it just a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, guys, when we rec when we recorded the um, Fox pilot, the first episode, Piscopo yeah. does witchcraft on the show. It actually doesn't sound too bad as Frank, but I mean, that's your entire career being a Frank Sinatra cover band. It, yes. Yes, it yeah. is. Uh, you know, who uh, he had like a show for a hot minute, I think. And yeah. Opie and Anthony, I swear to God, it was the best bit ever. They took that apart and fucking it was amazing. And it's... it just buried him. I mean, there was just never again will I look at him the same after that bit. Oh, you can, you probably couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, it turned into a really horrible impersonation of Frank. And then. Other comedians got up. Then you get up and you go, friends of earth. I, I don't know. What, what is friends of earth? I guess I'm a friend of earth. I don't know. I mean, uh, the way I see it is, you know, earth, wherever it goes throughout the galaxy, people always say to. Okay, hold on. Earth, earth, do your Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing it, but it was just boom, bada boom, boom, bada ba. You just nailed him so well. And everybody on the dais just died. And <laughs> so you can tell that Gilbert's like totally tickled pink that uh, that someone remembered this because he didn't remember this. And he did he's done so many gigs, I don't I don't imagine he remembers a whole lot of them. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's done quite a lot and he is very cutting when he wants to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and keeping with the, um, uh, one, like we're not going to go in any kind of chronological order with the clips guys, because we have so many of them. We're just trying to pick our favorite ones, but this is one more recently from, um, it was, I think, uh, NPR, and uh, they did a video. It, if they, <laughs> it's him reading from Lady Chatterley's Lover because it has to be like PG. So let me just set it up here first. So there's something very funny. I mean, yeah. let's say hilarious, outrageously funny on the internet now. A bit of college humor um, with you reading from Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. We can't air that. We could <laughs> maybe the or and yes from from that but it is just sensational we're an all ages radio program and we want to keep our license so in the true tradition of okay we have to end like we of course we have to cut it up but uh we're keeping in mind guys remember npr is not always this staid fucking boring dustbin of board like just just shit i mean you can always get something entertaining there and gilbert is no different he can do any show straight and when you mentioned uh, Howard not being able to get a lot out of him. Contrast that with one interview with Mark Marin, and he was phenomenal. That was the, one of the I best know. interviews I ever heard. And Me, Gilbert was I, brilliant in it. I know. I love that interview. And Mark is 
that's how you know Howard's a shit interview. It's like mm-hmm. you just, yeah, I mean, you just contrast it with somebody like Marin and you just, how can you write a book about interviews after hearing something like that Mark Marin interview? Oh, yeah. And, and, and much less release a fucking transcript book based on these stupid interviews. He had 20 years of Gilbert, <laughs> and, or more, almost 30 years of Gilbert, and that's what he decided. And Marin trumped it all in one hour. No analysis, no nuanced analysis about the nothing. relationship with Gilbert and nothing. Just no. shit. Straight dog yeah. shit. That's right. Public broadcasting, Gilbert. We'd love for you to read something considered outrageous and sensational from about 100 years ago. And, ah. and of course, it's British because, you know, that makes it classy. In your own voice. Okay. Would you treat us to something? No, from- I'll have to go sideways. To- oh, that sounds dirty already. <laughs> See, already. <laughs> Me, no matter what I say, comes out filthy. Well, <laughs> okay, keep going. Now let's hear from Lady Chatterley's lover. Okay. She found her scrap of handkerchief and was blindly trying to dry her face. Shall you come to the hut? He said in a quiet, neutral voice. Oh, quiet. And and closing his hand softly on her upper arm, he drew her up and led her slowly to the hut. (laughs) (laughs) But not letting go of her till she was inside. Then he cleared aside the chair and table and took a brown soldier's blanket from the tool chest. (laughs) Spreading it slowly, she glanced at his face. As she stood motionless. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody just listening to this instead of looking at the uh, video, the uh, engineers like, in, in the back, they're just fucking losing it, but they're doing their best to keep quiet. His face was pale, without expression, like of a man <laughs> submitting to fate. You lie there, he said softly (laughs) as he shut the door so that it was dark, quite dark. (laughs) D.H. Lawrence is smiling. I think he was thinking of me when he wrote this. uh... (laughs) So I thought that was fucking brilliant. And that kind of reminds me of when Jackie reads Robin's book, you know, like. It's great. Yeah. Um, the um, further along, guys, one of the earlier episodes of, of him on Stern, there was, uh, of course, my, I can't, we can't go out with him doing a, a Paul Lind impression. And this was the one where they were talking oh, about, uh, what's his name? Liberace. But then he, he resorts to doing Paul Lind. And then <laughs> this one speaks for itself. So here we go, guys. But uh, it's hard to meet the right one. Why, with all those women, I can't keep it in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> my sequins are all stained. It's unbelievable. I, love I get all of so them. much clue cane. <laughs> <laughs> what about just white women or? Oh, doesn't matter. I'll bang the colored ones off. <laughs> <laughs> this one's about 96 or 97, guys. I can't remember exactly. Times those oh. colored chambermaids come in. <laughs> Is that right? Those big, fat colored chambermaids. <laughs> they're the ones that turn me on. Oh, those real Aunt Jemima looking ones. <laughs> those big, fat 300 pounds. They'll come in with their big black butts. That's what turns me on. Holy shit. I mean, could you imagine doing that now? Oh, God, no. I mean, just you know, the Aunt Jemima thing would get you, like, canceled in, like, no one's business. Oh, fuck. Um, Gilbert really was the canary in the coal mine, though, for what comes to cancellation. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah, he really was. Everybody should have been like, oh, maybe we're in for a lot of bad things in the future. Totally. 
<laughs> and they're big true peak price. <laughs> That's what I like. Leave. <laughs> I like when they don't have any teeth either. <laughs> so oh, 90 year old, 300 pound black chambermaid. That's what they get married. <laughs> Those colored chambermaids. When they come in, they're the ones that turn me on. So Lee, you'll never get married, or you're gonna you're gonna get married one day. Yeah, when the right kluge comes along. Oh, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you not aware of the reference, I didn't dig it up because I figured it doesn't matter. You can explain it quickly. There was a, a, a some kind of media figure called John Kluge. So at some point during the show with Gilbert, and it was mentioned maybe in the news, all of a sudden Robin's pussy became to Gilbert Black Kluge. <laughs> so, so that's where that word comes out. Every now and then you'll hear it. So. Poor John Kluge. <laughs> Never thought he'd represent vagina. <laughs> and then we hit Gilbert, you know, like a dog with a bone. You give him one thing, it's never going away. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. That, what about that guy you hang around with, Boober? Does, does, that looks very odd. <laughs> oh, he's just my accountant. <laughs> oh, Boober. Yes. He's my accountant. He likes to dress in tight clothes just because it helps him move around quicker while he's doing my books. But you just give me those 500-pound color chambermaids. That's what I want my you know, <laughs> it's almost like he could be talking about Ralph right now. <laughs> you yeah, know, the pretty accountant much. is pretty oh, much yeah. Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> Howard's the Paul Lynn without the funny. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Hey, all right, so Gilbert is here. <sighs> Della Reese is my Why idea. Is oh, well, man. Right. So you're the new Paul Lynn on Hollywood Square. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's here to say. I, I once heard, I think David Brenner said it, that uh, I'm not sure where I, it was that Paul Lynn, not only being an old queen and an alcoholic. Well, he's dead, he can't yeah, right, go yes, that He was also like viciously anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> and dude. he would get drunk <laughs> during oh, lunch God, hour is... yeah. and he'd go, oh, those miserable Jews. <laughs> <laughs> you know the reason I don't have a career now? Stinking Jews in Hollywood. Those money hungry Jews. They don't care about quality. So. <laughs> I could totally see Paul Lynn being a miserable drunk queen ranting about racist tropes. If anybody wants to hear more about it, they interviewed Bruce Verlanch. Him and Frank and interviewed Bruce Verlanch, who wrote for, um, along along with like the Oscars, wrote for uh, Hollywood Squares, and he told loads uh -huh. of story. One of the best stories was, remember uh, LeVar Burton, you know, Kunta Kinte yeah, yeah. from Roots, right? And Reading Rainbow and all that shit in Star Trek. Yeah. So he was. They were working the same lot. And so they were filming the Paul Lynn Halloween special, and there's oh. Paul in a witch's costume. <laughs> oh, they were smoking outside, and he sees, you know, LeVar Burton walking by. He can't remember his name, so he just screams out, Roots! <laughs> Roots! <laughs> and apparently, LeVar Burton's just fucking dr bust the gut laughing. What can you do? There's a guy in a witch. Paul Lynn is a witch's outfit. <laughs> you know what? Paul Lynn has this, a similar effect that Gilbert does just yeah. his presence makes you laugh. Oh, you know, fuck yeah. Gilbert, like, like even in uh, what's the Trump show? Uh, I the Apprentice. Uh, yeah, it's The Apprentice. Yeah. When Gilbert did that, it's like every scene he was in, you could care less about what anybody else was doing. You Gilbert automatically is the focus of every shot because he's yeah. just fucking hilarious, and there's right. no getting around it like he takes up all the oxygen and oh yeah rightly so <laughs> but i and i don't think it was it's really about ego i think it just nat it's a natural no. sort of chemistry i guess and what happens when he starts it not it doesn't help that that voice which can cut glass would <laughs> just cut right yeah. through your soul it's but, a diamond cutter <laughs> oh yeah big time so, <laughs> he was, he was, so he was an old queen who was <laughs> just what did he think he could do with that <laughs> an anti-semitic old queen oh, you know all the, all the drunken homos blame the Jews. did he sniff <laughs> pass him over i could have been and gone with the wind <laughs> those no good kikes held me back <laughs> 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 okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. 
one of uh, this is a real short clip, but uh, he loved, of course, the the Dracula Godfrey uh, was that that was done so many fucking times, and we could throw a couple. We're going to throw a couple of them in there, but uh, one of them was uh, <laughs> the idea that he was pile impressions on. Dracula. So here's Seinfeld as Bella Lugosi. Go ahead. You know what? You know what though? The Dracula Godfrey thing. The thing that made it funny is when Gilbert just kind of innately knew when to do it and put it on. But Howard made it so forced. Yeah. Like, you know, he just started having Gilbert on and started saying, you know, like basically make balloon animals. Like he treated yeah. him, started treating him like a clown, like yeah, a magician or something. And it's like those impressions aren't as good when they're just not coming, when they're not natural. No, of course not. And, uh, you know, one of, again, yeah. not knowing what he has. And, uh, and he said it too, in his eulogy, he was like, I just wanted Gilbert to be this way. I just mm -hmm. wanted to help him with his career to be a bigger star. Cause I knew he could be, you have no sense of what Gilbert is or why it's funny. You no, he controlling didn't. Gilbert and making him like do this on cue is not what makes Gilbert good. You fucking idiot. Well, yeah, and, and truth truth be told, when sometimes when he would get with Artie and, and start riffing, sometimes it was it got much. Like they were and Artie was always really bad later on, especially when of not knowing when to end a bit when it's not funny anymore. Uh well, yeah. and beating something into ground. Artie just became, especially because he was so fucked up on drugs, yeah, and I yeah. think resentful of Howard, you mm -hmm. know, it became Gilbert and Artie just sort of taking the show off the rails. I think a lot of times on purpose because, you know. It was more fun. Yeah, and because I secretly think Artie just, that was his way of sticking it to Howard without formally sticking it to Howard. Oh, yeah, totally. So here's here's another improvisation. What? Do Jerry Seinfeld doing Bela Lugosi. <laughs> Listen to them in the children of the night. <laughs> See, that's perfect. He's what very good. music they make. <laughs> it's me, you're very talented. Yes. I don't understand these reviews. <laughs> so, that's a short clip. So he did a whole bunch of... Um, uh, different stuff uh, over the years. One of the ones I got to see if I got it here. Okay, uh, there's there was a Amy Heckerling's nanny. That was one of the most famous Gilbert appearances on the show. She called in to talk about Gilbert having been at Amy's uh, Amy Heckerling's house, the director. Uh -huh. And uh, but then he she sent her nanny who whose parents survived the Holocaust to pick up Gilbert. For those who don't know, it's because it's way back, like 96 or so. And once he found out that they were in the Holocaust, he started making Holocaust jokes <laughs> in the car. It, it's so great because Gilbert obviously is Jewish. And yeah. It's like you would think that would be sac a sacred cow. Nope. No, no, not at all. <laughs> no. And, and so right for the Holocaust. So, but on top of that, here's and here's the thing, a little bit of trivia a lot of people don't know. There's a um, Amy's daughter, Molly, at the time, who's like, I don't know, 12 or 11, maybe less. And um, they he starts <laughs> making these horrible like like <laughs> pedophilia jokes about Molly. <laughs> what I found out later on through the release of the book uh, Ghostbusters Daughter, that Harold Ramis was the father of of my Amy Heckerling's kid. So that was oh. a secret that was a secret for the longest time and she yeah, released a book really? after Yeah, yeah. And uh and it's a great book. I can't remember. I think um Violet uh, Ramis or something. I think it's called Ghostbusters Daughter. Wait a minute. Did they keep it a secret from her too? They all they all they all, none of them knew except Harold and uh Amy Heckerling. And so when there's uh John Travolta's character in Look Who's Talking, I guess I guess, I think he's the I guess he's an asshole. He leaves some oh no, there's a guy that leaves uh Kirstie Alley after getting knocking her up. Um look I can't who's remember talk who. I haven't seen that in so long. Anyway, the guy who knocks her up and leaves her is, is supposed to be Harold Ramis. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So I always thought like, you know, the Liv Tyler story, how she grew up thinking that Todd was Rundgren it Todd Rundgren? Yeah. yeah. And then she saw like him, him on stage. And it's like, you know, <laughs> even Tyler looks like a clone of her in a man. Yeah. And I always thought, wow, that 
you know, that story's one in a million. I guess not. <laughs> no, God, no. And it's amazing when it comes. God. And 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 they did eventually meet, and they um, and they became really close, actually, as sisters. But it's funny. And the book is totally worth it. Um, and uh, I gotta get that. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a really good book. And so that that just adds another layer to it. But anyway, so the, so Gilbert, I think, was on the show and the, <laughs> the same person called it. The nanny called in. And so they went back and forth. And she was anyway, she's I, a German Jew, of course. But I, go ahead. I, the best part about this, too, is because the woman is so upset and the more upset she gets and the more <laughs> just irreverent and not giving a shit Gilbert gets. It's yeah. great. Yeah, <laughs> so I just took a segment of it, guys, because it really is like 40 minutes of the show, so I couldn't play oh, all of it. Oh, it was awesome. I even yeah. found you on anything. You're not funny on the news. You're just annoying. You're annoying. more of us, a vampire. Horrible. Oh, 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 you can't Hi, critique Rebel. Gilbert's vampire. Yeah. No, yes, I can. You were, please, oh, Gilbert, I beg you. He was in the <laughs> He was Here. just sitting there like a fool. You did the whole thing. Here is the vampire. He was just the, you know, he was awful. I had to turn off the TV. Of the night. I, I, want I want to say one thing, Howard. Okay, hold on, guys. No, that's yes. not even about you. Please, Miss say. Holocaust woman. <laughs> <laughs> I think the brought of oh. the Holocaust woman. No German woman. Please, I bite the neck. I don't think that's oh, funny. the German no, one woman. Is, one, one, he, he just wants funny scenes. You know what? <laughs> Gilbert. Yes. Dracula's here, wait. Yes. <laughs> she can't. She can't get through. No. So great. Yeah. And it's like being, you know, when you're picking on a bus driver or something, oh, yeah. you just oh, can't. Yeah. And the kids won't stop. <laughs> well, I mean, have you ever you've had that laughter where, you you know, like you're in church and you get a fit of laughter oh, and yeah. you're not supposed to. And then you try to keep yourself from laughing and laughing and you just got to excuse yourself because you won't stop no matter how hard you try. Uh, my parents used to take us to the Buffalo Philharmonic. Oh, I hated it. They dragged us there like all the time, me and my cousins. And there was an opera singer one time and we were laughing so hard. Our parents dragged us right out of there. <laughs> we, couldn't, we could not fucking stop. And I just remember my aunt and my mom just picking yeah. it, like just grabbing us by the shirts and saying, get out now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. couldn't stop. Ah, no. Ah, yes. Yes. I am not going to hurt you. I will give you eternal life. Before I go, you will live forever. Howard. Among the undead. Ah, you're so boring. <laughs> Boy, are you boring. <laughs> this is always. I will chew a number into your arm. Chew a number. With my thing. <laughs> Now some Boy, of these might be boring. <laughs> some, of these, some of these jokes might be Jackie helping Gary Gilbert along, but I'm not. I, I'm not so sure. I wish there was video to go with this. I anyway, <laughs> you know what, Gilbert? How <laughs> can I say something? Save your Gilbert, head, Gilbert. You are really exciting. <laughs> Gilbert, they could have left. Gilbert. <laughs> Howard? Yes. I think. If I bit the necks of your parents, they would be alive today. <laughs> Drinking the blood. Oh, my living. mother is alive, you asshole. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to talk to Igor about this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she's still trying to be serious. Yeah, completely. It just spurs him on. Listen to me, me. I need to. I need to tell you how unfunny this is. Howard, <laughs> Igor, you said she was dead. Howard, <laughs> the hell is the matter Igor. with you? Yes. Shut up. Gilbert, your voice is Let me put a name on the computer. Gilbert, they, they should have left the foreskin. <laughs> I you built my know. own foreskin. Yeah, your foreskin should have been on you and somebody should rip it off. And then you would know what pain means. You oh, okay, <laughs> hold on, guys. Feels good. Rip my foreskin off. <laughs> Right now, I command you, stare into my eyes. 
and rip my foreskin off. Ah, ah, oh, boy, that's good. Oh, you're the most anti-Semitic Jew I've ever seen. She's an anti-Semite. You're right. She's an anti. He really, he gets Jews. Okay, a little more, guys. He's a bad name. Yes, he does. Igor he he is a Jew. He stands crooked. <laughs> 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 He's down the cookie. Oh, you make everybody laugh but me. I don't, I don't know. I don't find it funny at all. It's <laughs> <laughs> not funny at all, ma'am. Okay, a little bit more. <laughs> oh, God. When's the last time we all heard the whole cast busted up? You know, knee slap laughing. I mean, Jackie's laugh right now is priceless. You can hear him falling off his chair. <laughs> you can hear Howard doing it too. Like, yeah, I just, yeah. I want the show back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm crying because of the six million people who died in Germany. But especially Robin is so sensitive, you know. And she, right. like, I don't understand. She's outrageous. I told you I wasn't laughing at, at Gilbert. I Gilbert is childish. Gilbert. Gilbert is childish. He's like a PC. She feels sympathy because she was in slavery. <laughs> He understands. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck finding this today, guys. <laughs> I wish I had better sound quality, guys. There's one on YouTube, but it's cut off. There's Fuck. something missing. Oh, she shit. understands. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Oh fucking good morning. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to bite her on her black neck. <laughs> <laughs> and her black her cloogie. <laughs> I want to bite her black cloogie. Tear <laughs> into my eyes. <laughs> bite her cloogie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, be- before I he did this the whole night at Amy Hackerling's house. <laughs> Pardon? He did this the whole night at Amy Hackerling's. He spent like two and a half hours there. I okay, hold on. Like Jewish blood, there is a hint of your filter. <laughs> oh my God! You know what's funny to me? She was heckled at Amy Hackerling. I know. Yeah, he can make Jewish jokes about the filter. That could be her autobiography. Gilbert, are you saying that the only reason that you did all that heckling? The only reason you did all these Jewish jokes is because it was inappropriate that she bring up the Holocaust. Yes, I thought it was really inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so, man. guys, this was uh, a notorious day, January 10th, 2007. It's been scrubbed from a lot of archives. It's on YouTube now for some strange reason. It's uh, it's available up there, and it's been up there for years. But uh, this, is, this is the one episode where, near the end, uh, like Howard gets pissed off at the two of them of Gil- Gilbert and Artie because they start going a little too far with the use of the N word and then Robin gets upset and they just took over the news which they used to do all the time and it was fine but suddenly now it's like I think Howard and Robin both thought fuck it they're taking all the attention away plus it's 2007 so we're nearing yeah. we're nearing the woke decade yeah so... they're getting a little close and he's 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 a little afraid that that's going to affect them somehow i'm surprised this didn't get taken down from youtube usually anything good is only up momentarily like i've you know i i have so many broken links from youtube of stirring oh, yeah. things i mean it sucks it does suck yeah that's that's a lot a lot of reasons why we're not putting so many episodes on there anymore guys because the editing is just un it's just brutal it's unnecessary and it's brutal because you know of uh, youtube's policies and they'll you know, let anybody complain oh god i know it's fucking karens of the world you yeah. get it, your channel too like how many times have you had to redo it it's crazy four four channels maybe five <laughs> Yeah, just because of just dickheads. Uh, at any rate, guys, this was it. And basically, <laughs> you'll, you'll, we'll let you hear it for yourself. We'll play as much as we can. Talk the wrap-up uh, show, come on. Uh, we talked about this earlier. The Apple Corporation <laughs> has come out with a new phone. 
It's to compete, I suppose, with the Blackberries and the Treos of the world. And it has a completely automated touch screen format. Wow. Here's uh, Steve the Jobs. Gilbert, what's another w way to say Blackberry? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. Please let me hear it. Oh. 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 He's getting a little bit sleeping. Leave him alone. I, uh, He's guys, trying to get some rest. I remember, some I remember Gilbert from the Hollywood Squares a few years ago. Okay, hold on, guys. Oh, uh, boy. That made me laugh. Uh, Apple. African American. C there you go. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Holly Berry. <laughs> This, this is a phone he'd like to have. Fred Rira. One of the big motivating factors for us is, is just uh, creating something that we all want ourselves, too. Jeez, well, that, thank you for laughing and cackling all over oh, that. I'm reading uh, anyway. about the new phone. Uh, Weezy that, Berry. Reading about the new phone that uh, Steve Jobs and Apple are coming out with. I don't see anything all that new, but what do I know? Oh, I love that Howard's shitting on the Apple phone, which essentially is... The mainstream phone, but he's like, I don't really get it. I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a stumble no, a vi Visionary. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh. It's a little bit. That's on the Nipsey Russell Berry. Uh, my, my trio has a touchscreen. <laughs> I'm gonna ignore this. My trio has a touchscreen. The sloppy white. My trio. Like the bad kids in class. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're the much, teacher's but... trying to go the on. The Mitchell Berry. <laughs> Get more obscure, why don't you? <laughs> Gilbert would watch TV once Joey in a while. Joey Mitchell. <laughs> the, the watermelon eating, the watermelon eating berry. Uh, <laughs> right, let's go, Robin. What else? Enough, you got Benji. Yeah. That was no. an awful joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Robin didn't throw something at Artie. They, There's like she would take no that. Like she would take that from it. almost anybody way back in way back when. But I think it's less about them being offensive. Uh, for Howard, it's them being offensive. But for her, it's like. You're taken away from my fucking news. This is my shine time. And, yeah. you know, it's also the end of the show. Yeah. So the longer this goes, the more time that they got to sit there and work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the news is always like, OK, you know, Howard either really wanted it to go fast and push it along or he wanted to milk it with, mm -hmm. you know, whoever they had sitting in on the news. Mm -hmm. But in this case, <laughs> <laughs> You're being dragged. He's speaking yeah. later today. He's finally ready to unveil his new plans for the Iraq. Cambridge. <laughs> Turn off his mind. Uh. Go ahead. The lazy berry. Oh, oh funny. Oh, funny. Come on, let's go. Uh, here's uh, Tony Snow who says that uh, the president is changing Iraq's plans. So it goes on a little further. They start doing some Ted Kennedy stuff, and it gets a little funny. But, of course, it's dated as well. Dated, it was dated when they did it then. But then on uh, the Gilbert's uh, podcast, the Amazing Colossal podcast, the second episode where they did live with Artie, there's a post-Blackberry story that Artie talks about. It's real short. <laughs> and, and and so Howard got frustrated. He couldn't deal with it anymore. So he said he looked at me and Gilbert, it was like me and Gilbert were in school, and you can't, you, you can't look at each other. You're going to laugh. And Howard said, listen, enough. No more N-word. You can't say the N-word anymore. Yeah. No more. And me and Gilbert said, okay, we're sorry. We put our heads down. <laughs> and Robin was doing the news, so Howard said, okay, Robin, next story. And I swear to God, Robin said, Spike Lee has a new movie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love them. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Now, so a lot good. Of, yeah, a lot of people were wondering. I'm going to go through. Uh, I'm going to go through some of various episodes of um, like him, him on the show over the years, and I can't remember exactly what year go, goes is goes from when to when. But there's one where he did old Groucho, and this was with Richard oh. Jenny in studio. I think it was maybe 2003. And rest in peace, Richard Jenny. Great, great stand up. And um, and they start egging him on. <laughs> so there's a story about how he, Uma Thurman was up in his apartment one time. Um, old Groucho, he did it for uh, the comedy show my dad and I went to. Th I think that was the hardest my dad laughed was for old Groucho. We were, I mean, it was so fucking funny and came out of nowhere. It was great. And just to give you guys an idea, because a lot of you, I know, I know there's a bunch of fucking 30 something year olds are going Groucho. Who? Know. <laughs> right. So let me That's just uh, give you a comparison. Um, and it, it, let me just take it. Take, I'll give you a sound from uh, him on Dick Cavett, for example. It's not the latest. It's not the oldest he was, but uh, it uh, it's closer to the end of his life. So one sec. Let me just put it on here. Um, no, God, Dick Cavett show. I love it. Yeah. 
and I had the pieces home, which I had written for the New Yorker magazine. I was much prouder of that than I was in any play I'd ever been in. Okay, so that's an example of old Groucho, old Groucho, what he sounded like. And he was actually excellent on those shows. He still really was a great interview. I love Gilbert's impression of him, though. And it really, like, the impressions that Gilbert did at the comedy show just came out of nowhere, and you weren't oh, yeah. expecting it. So it yeah. was, it it just floored, the whole room was <laughs> erupting. It was great. He did such a great David Brenner impression. <laughs> oh, fuck, his impressions are so awesome. They're really good. He And he, I think he started out doing impressions originally when he, when he started doing stand-up, and then eventually they just became part of a larger part of the act, just telling really old Catskills jokes. But in a, a more pop culture-centric way than, let's say, Jackie. So here's here's the clip. He invite Uma Thurman to the launch. Oh, oh no, she, I was, someone else was coming over and she was a friend of theirs. Oh, oh. but I can actually say she was did up you, there. Did you make your move? Oh, of course. Yeah. Did you, oh, of did course you try I nailed move? her. Yeah. How long did she stay in that apartment? Did you do your Groucho impression here? Oh, hey, Uma. <laughs> you know, years ago, we would, we would stay at these boarding houses. <laughs> but they didn't have hotels. <laughs> and I love that he could go on forever doing it. They egg him on. They start asking him questions as Groucho. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the whole imagery of him hitting on Uma Thurman as old Groucho. As Groucho. <laughs> this is that we were saying. There would more be boarding houses and where they put up people who would just stay. They would charge you. <laughs> 35 cents, and that included breakfast and dinner. And that was pretty expensive. You would see Groucho on these talk shows, <laughs> and you would talk to you like, you're so scared. 100 years old. Why did he wear a beret to the day he just was not funny yes. anymore? And Dick Cavett would ask him, you couldn't think of anything funny to say. He was completely burnt out. Now, that's Wiggy being a shithead because he was still funny, actually, but he was more, he was just slower. He was an older guy, Docile. for fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very gauzy anyway. speech. <laughs> like oh, yeah. Very... Big, big time, yeah. Just start going into these rambling stories about 35 cents at a morning. Oh, right. Do you remember the very, very last interviews you would see, which weren't even from Dick Cavett? Somebody had interviewed him, but he was had the beret. He had almost no face left. And some <laughs> top wife would hold his arm and sort of help him along. Yeah, nurse. Yeah, or I thought it was, I think it was his wife. He didn't get married. No, he was a nurse. Oh, he had that that so-called girlfriend. Right, right. right. But, yeah, she would help him along and remind a him what he was doing. Erin Fleming, <laughs> <laughs> and she was an actress. And the other the comparison here is who's Groucho now? Unf if you want to talk unfunny? Howard and his Erin Fleming is Beth taking care of him. Wow, I never. I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Except for Groucho is extremely much better. <laughs> oh, my God. He was and phenomenal. And that's not saying a lot. Dick oh, Cavett. man, you're right. He it's a sad. He is yeah. old fucking Groucho. Yes. And it's um, <clears throat> the the one thing. There was an interview. Unfortunately, it's, it's Alec Baldwin. He had a thing called, I think, Real Conversations or something like that. Oh, fuck. And, <clears throat> and um and then Dick Cavett had a story about Groucho where they were leaving some snooty Hollywood party or whatever. And he just he decided he didn't want to leave. He didn't want to be there. And some some Hollywood missus goes up to him and says, oh, leaving so soon, Mr. Gr Mr. Mox. And he kind of looked at her askance and he goes, I've had a wonderful evening, but this wasn't it. <laughs> 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 you got to love a guy like that. <laughs> uh, Alec Baldwin, you know, the pompous meter goes up high anytime he speaks. But I do sometimes like when he tells stories he's pretty good yeah. at recount recanting stories so that's he, he's if anybody can find them his two episodes on inside the actor in, in, inside the in, inside the actor studio are time capsule good they're really 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 good and um it's a different he's still he's not as pompous he's just actually more intrigued with telling like teaching as opposed to just being a dickhead and uh and it's not political it's all about the business so it's perfect for him I think Alec Baldwin could have taken to, you know, his ego is so big and there was this shift of like when, you know, his he always had an ego, but his talent and his storytelling and his love of actual theater and movies mm -hmm. kind of outweighed the shittiness of him. But now for, it's for a long time, for a long time. But now it's completely the uh, lopsided. Yeah. Sucks. So 
<laughs> so we'll continue with old Groucho. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Is that right, Groucho? And she's an actress, and she worked with Woody Allen, and then people like that. And uh, <laughs> two years ago, we would meet an actress in shows. <laughs> now, back then... They would right? court back then and date the actresses? They, they, well, that's what you would do. You would <laughs> take them on a date. And that's what they would do back Could you then. have sex with any of them, Groucho? We, we would have sex, but <laughs> <laughs> back then, <laughs> back, back then you would see a girl and she would be attractive and <laughs> men would react uh, sexually. Did they have anal would, you have, yeah, would you have anal back then? No, we would have anal sex. No, they hadn't these, discovered that. These, <laughs> these, back then, back then they had back, anal back sex. Back then, anal sex was described as anal sex. <laughs> and we would... But, <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> so good. So, guys, this is the next clip is an interview he did. Uh, it's on YouTube with Richard Belzer. It's just called Gilbert in uh, Richard Belzer's Conversation. Great, great interview. It's only about 20 minutes long. Totally worth your time. It's post the uh, tsunami cons uh, tsunami scandal where he lost his uh, Aflac gig. And we got clips up to more clips about that. But this is something <laughs> just more in line of the uh, incongruousness of uh, sorry, sorry, incongruity of them, the, the way they handled it, firing him outright. And then, you know, um, just how in real life and entertainment, the 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 line between really shitty taste and being serious and sentimental or or emotive, it, it becomes almost comical the way they do it like uh, already did in a clip uh al davis the f the football guy died and the announcer kind of an he said ladies and gentlemen please join me and <laughs> you're standing at attention wow. for the legendary al davis who died today and he just he didn't know how to separate that show business voice for the you know to the somber yes. voice the way an old-time broadcaster would know this yes so yes. And this is how it goes. This is how it goes on this show. Most bizarre segues like that. one. Yes. Yeah. 600 people died in Taiwan today in an earthquake. Later, <laughs> Sally's going to show us how to make an upside down game. <laughs> we, you should string like 50 of those together. I one of one of the best news things I've ever heard. They had on Eli we Weisel. Right. Who had written books. He was his family died in the Holocaust. He'd written books about and they 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 asked him, they said, if you could make any wish, what would it be? OK, a little bit more, guys. And and he said, I would wish that people wouldn't just stand by. And he goes, the Holocaust happened because people stand by and tragedies and genocide continue to happen because people stand by and the host puts his hand on Ellie Wiesel's knee and goes and he turns to the camera and goes and we're going to ask you to stand by <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> and I thought people called me tasteless this yeah. that should be yeah. Okay, so, it's so funny. I thought I thought you know it, it was it was one of those occasions where he can actually be quite thoughtful. But did you ever really get that on the Stern Show? No. He was uh, Gilbert was perceptive, and mm -hmm. you know he was one of those people that noticed these things and mm -hmm. could make bits out of them. But Howard didn't. You know, he didn't seem interested in everything. He was only interested in these certain tropes yes, that right. Gilbert did. That was it. Right. And then that's why the audience not got sick of Gilbert, but I mean, how many retellings of the same thing could you possibly well, ask for? I don't know. Ask David Spade and how that works. And I mean, Norm MacDonald, it, so it was always, it was always, uh, oh, are you still addicted to gambling? And, you know, uh, how did you feel about getting kicked off SNL? Didn't that happen 20 years ago? It's you know, so that, just not curious. I mean, if you're no. not a curious person... He, you can't have a real conversation. That's the problem. Howard can have conversations. You're absolutely right. That was basically it. And and Gilbert on any show would give uh, would do conversations. So this was him on Marin, the aforementioned Marin interview, talking <clears throat> about the tsunami. So here we go. 
but you've done but it's weird like you know i was looking at your stuff i mean you have done like shitloads of stuff i mean the voiceover thing in between the movie parts and the tv i mean you've never stopped working really oh yeah is that true yeah temporarily yeah. i stopped working if it was a tsunami <laughs> the tsunami hurt me more than it hurt anyone in japan <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, my lord. Uh, Bill, Bill Meyer, when he was on Kimmel, was talking about how, you know, Gilbert just tasteless, didn't care. Like, right after 9 11, I guess it was the Hugh Hefner roast, I think yeah, he was yeah. on. And he just right away, you know, people are still reeling. The city still bur- <laughs> smells like, you know, smoke. Yeah, and Gilbert's making. <laughs> well, yeah, World <laughs> Trade Center like, jokes. Well, he yeah. didn't, it was it, it wasn't it was world it was, it was uh, 9-11 related, but it wasn't obviously yeah. he didn't mention them specifically. But people still yeah. were like too soon, or whatever. And he he's gone on record saying, "I don't believe in that." I mean, like, why is it okay yeah. thirty years later to say, "You know what? The Titanic died, but fuck them. That was a long time ago." <laughs> yes, you know. And I see his point. I see his point a hundred percent, but. It's not the way the world works. People do need time to get past something. Well, um, it becomes funny 10 years later. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can you but, can definitely make. Well, I mean, maybe not. I the, know some people are still. Yeah. Everybody like uh, says Ari Shafir is the king of too soon. But no, it was Gilbert originally. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. And um, so here, uh, let me see if I can get this. through. The next clip is. Um, it was one from the near the end of an interview from maybe 2002, where they're, they they it's during the news. Robin's playing a clip of Eddie Griffin speaking, and then Nick mm-hmm. Nolte starts speaking, so he does a conversation between the two of them oh, <laughs> in his hey. impressions. Eddie, on when he realized his family was dysfunctional, B two. You know, when you're growing up, you never think your family's dysfunctional. You just think it's dysfunctional. It's only when you get out and, you know, see other people's families. Like, okay, maybe we are a little different. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte, yes. And here he is on his alcohol addiction, his arrest and recovery. Be- Okay, a little more. Great. Uh, addiction is a minor setback, you know. Uh, uh, to the level that I had control of for years. I couldn't see it in the middle of the I don't like the circumstances that I was. Who can understand what he's saying? You know, I regret that. He's a man's man. A tough guy, see? Okay, get a little bit more, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Nick Nolte talking to Eddie Griffin. <laughs> it came out of nothing. <laughs> I know, it's so good. Well, it doesn't help that, you know, Robin is the least analytical news lady you've ever heard in your life. And she reads the news and stumbles through it like nobody's business. I oh, mean, yeah. just one story clunking into the other with zero introspection. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, Here's the um, uh, there's this I, one of the one of these episodes. There was a bit there, of course, that we have to address the whole Belinda Carlisle thing. But either way, it was the go not the Belinda Carlisle, uh, where he, you know, basically was opening and he got booed because no one wanted to fucking see him. There were a bunch of kids. But either yeah. way, there was an article. They read an article about him bombing on the show. So Yay. this was his take. <laughs> All right. Comedian Gilbert Gottfried's ship was sinking Wednesday night. In the, in, the second, in the second of two shows at the 99 WMYX Comedy Pavilion with Miller Lite. Did you, do you remember this show? I don't. When was this? Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Was this in, in Milwaukee? Yes. Oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> Dressed in a loud blue shirt and wiping sweat from his brow every 10 seconds, he labored over a series of painfully unfunny routines involving okay, guys. the classic horror film stars <laughs> in incongruous situations. 
like Bela Lugosi doing who's on first. Unsurprisingly, the routines were met with several boos. Now, I've seen you do that routine. It is, to me, the funniest routine I've ever seen you do. It's brilliant. But I imagine in certain parts of the country, you could get booed. Yes. Uh, what do you do? Because they get offended. You know? What do you do on stage when you're playing at your most brilliant in, material? In Milwaukee, they feel quite strongly about Lugosi. <laughs> 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 I love this. If you do something there? that could be mocking fun of him. Yeah, when you do your Bella Lugosi, everyone laughs. Yes. I don't understand. Lugosi spoke with a thick Milwaukee accent. Oh, yes. Maybe it's Come a very there. young crowd and they don't even know who Bella Lugosi is. <laughs> I was doing much more obscure people in Lugosi. <laughs> well, why not? Why not play old age homes where your audience will know about Lugosi? Yes. I mean, why go after the young people at this point? I was doing jokes about Pugsley from the Animal. <laughs> <laughs> And he knows that everyone hates it, and he digs deeper. <laughs> the Adams family, <laughs> a bunch of people going to see the Go Go's. Well, I don't, I don't know if it was. Well, this wasn't bad. This was more recently, oh. I guess. But, but either way, it would have been the same act because he never changed. Oh. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah. Jim Boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing like Ralph Cramden doing uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart in uh, uh, Casablanca. You're getting on that bus. You're getting on that plane. <laughs> ship was sinking. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you'll be performing, and I guess if you get a young crowd, they might not understand Bella Lugosi. Yeah, but it's still funny. Yeah, and and the, well, the funny thing there is that this is the summer fest, and they're saying he, he was dabbing sweat. No. Right in odds. <laughs> it was very hot out. That wasn't yeah. flop sweat. That was real. Yes. Uh, you want to say to our audience that was not flop sweat. That was regular sweat. But later on, doesn't he say in the article, I remember this. Yeah, go ahead. He said he said he resorted to doing homophobic. Oh, no. Well, isn't it true when you start to bomb, you start to yell at the audience and, and, and blurt out homophobic and sexy comments? The minute the joke doesn't work, I scream out faggot. <laughs> But you have such a you have such a good attitude about this. Look at you laughing at yourself. I mean, Rome is burning, and yet you're laughing about it. The minute the minute a joke doesn't kill, I go, you bunch of faggots! <laughs> Don't you know Bella Lugosi? <laughs> Imagine it now. Oh, fuck. No, not, and, yeah. You know what? Now we have comics who are like, oh, I have PTSD from the Oscars. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't Did you see Dracula, you stinking faggot? <laughs> Would you ever... You consider... never saw Son of Frankenstein, you bunch of homos? <laughs> Would you ever consider updating your act? You may be doing some new impressions. No, he'd rather call people homos and faggots. <laughs> Maybe do it, uh, you know, modernize it to Christopher Lee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another clip guys here um there was a guy called al goldstein who was a, a lawyer uh, sorry he was a, a, a publisher there's a magazine called screw back in the day and it was a pornographic magazine and those of you who wanted to hear more about al goldstein he features prominently in a documentary from 2008 called american swing which was about plato's retreat totally worth watching if you haven't seen it it's a fascinating oh. look into that swingers club and um and were the happy there <laughs> <laughs> it's a fa it's a fact it kind of it's 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 an amazing documentary because it kind of goes hand in hand with the the way that Studio 54 well Studio 54 was tax issues mostly but the the swingers scene like all the gay the gay clubs died out around the same time because of AIDS and so did right. So did Plato's Retreat. But anyway, Al Goldstein was featured in the documentary quite a bit. And he's uh, as much of a dirtbag as he is. Uh, he has a lot of interesting things to say about that era. So check it out. Either way, he's in prison for so-called so sexually harassing an employee, uh, putting her number out in the magazine to tell people that to, to call her a number and call her a cunt and shit like that. He's oh, a total God. dickhead. But uh, so and I think he did 60 days and he met kind of a sordid end. And I think it was Penn Jillette who subsidized his living condition, his sub, his living situation until he died. Wow. 
Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't know that. So the the, the lawyer called up on the show and complained because Gilbert he um, Gil, they well, they got Al, uh, Grandpa Al Lewis to speak on Al Goldstein's defense, and they wanted Gilbert to because he went to the, Al Goldstein's house and ate for free all these days, all these years, and he's, he didn't want to go and do it. <laughs> So oh, they got man. Dracula, Dracula Godfrey defending Al Goldstein. <laughs> yes. Gilbert's one of those guys that goes to Al Goldstein's brunches every Sunday. And now Al Goldstein and his lawyer want Gilbert to testify. As a character witness. Like, like, oh. As Bella Lugosi. Like, that like, was, that's, that's Adam Carolla in the studio, by the way, guys. Why don't you go as Bella Lugosi? Yeah, I must tell you, this Al Goldstein is a very and they tasty have the jewel. music played. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Al, believe me, you know what? He is not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> he is not. Ignore the fact that he works for Screw Magazine <laughs> I that he advertises butt plugs. <laughs> he is an innocent man. <laughs> he would never sexually harass a girl. <laughs> Just because he works for Screw and advertises she mails. <laughs> 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 your house and have anal sex with you for a dollar. <laughs> he is an innocent, wholesome individual. Uh, <laughs> judge, look into my eyes. <laughs> look at me, judge. I am here to free Augustine. <laughs> you will let that fat you go. <laughs> <laughs> you he is a big fat pike, and you will not put him in jail. Release that big fat pike. That big fat hook nose pike. Release that five hundred pound heed. <laughs> oh no. Like, if you didn't know Gilbert was Jewish, this would be like a hate crime at this point. <laughs> oh, shit. I, you know, like. I can't believe that they thought Gilbert would be a good character. <laughs> Do not put him in the prison. Eat those foxes. He cannot be. He cannot survive with those foxes. He is a 2,000 pound tight. With a big hook nose and bad skin. And his breath smells. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> he just rented. And he got little balls of saliva on the corners of his mouth when he speaks to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he advertises girls from Korea with penises. Who <laughs> you can order for five cents to come to your house and have oral sex with you. But other than that, he is an innocent man, your honor. <laughs> But other than that. <laughs> so um, the next one I'm going to play, guys, is a little later um, when he I'm not I can't remember if he was on Artie's podcast or um, uh, I think I think Artie had done his. And they went there was always we should, should go into this whole story of we talked about it a little bit before we started recording why he was banned from the show. And he his final appearance was in summer or so of 2012. And that was right as the GT GTD thing was starting to come into play. Marcy was in place. He, I talked to Richie Wilson. I asked him about it. He said the spitting on the cupcakes and the fucking with the cupcakes was maybe the last nail in the coffin. But if he didn't do that, which those things were going to be thrown out anyway, who gives a shit? Um, he and they were egging him on. The Howard TV stern was saying, what are you going to do? Spit on the cupcakes. And he did it. Of course, he was going to do it. Uh, they just didn't want him on because he was going to be too touchy and they wanted a less guests, a list guests at that point. But yeah, Fillmore and I were talking about this and I go, yeah, could you picture Billie Eilish and Gilbert together? I mean, <laughs> you would, you couldn't. Howard, there would be no way Howard could do the show that he's doing now next sitting next to Gilbert without Gilbert completely shredding it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just are you gonna ask about her green hair? Like I mean 
<laughs> so the so he he never really got an answer, but he did call Bowie, and this is part of the story. So um, Gilbert on the special, Gilbert explains how Dara, his wife, called Gary and asked, "Is he banned from the show? What's the story here?" And this is uh, I don't know how many oh, people have heard this. Dara. So, yeah. Yeah, because we, we, we asked, so my wife called him and asked, uh, is Gilbert banned well, from the show? You haven't been on the show four years. Yeah, uh, so maybe I was a little suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> and and he goes, oh, no, 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 not like that, not like that. We just don't use comedians on the show. <laughs> We don't put comedians on the football. We don't put, and I'm thinking, oh, that's an entertaining show. Well, just, just that, that morning, Chelsea Handler was on. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then I realized that probably means <laughs> they don't consider her a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> So anytime you can do a buoy impression, I think that's worth it. Um, uh, this Chelsea one, Chelsea Handler is most overrated. Overrated. I mean, my God, she's she makes Amy Schumer look like fucking I don't know B. Arthur. Uh, in terms of in terms of comedy chops, I didn't. And by the way, the latest thing, guys, Amy Schumer was in the show after she blew him off to do Andy Cohen's show. Raven and I will be doing a, a probably a Patreon episode about. A certain amount of that and with the Gilbert stuff from the show we're going to leave off this because we're going to take treat it as part of the uh, um, part of the uh, overall breakdown, breakdown. however it, we can already tell you if you haven't listened to it the videos on YouTube he goes in Wiggs Wiggs bullshit about um, uh, Gilbert was unconscionable uh, but but expect it was, it. I was delusional surprised. well I, su- I was surprised he no- mentioned it at all to be honest with you I wasn't surprised he mentioned it but the delusion and setup, these people aren't grounded in reality. I don't no. know what life they thought they lived, mm-hmm. but it's not the one that they presented on mm-hmm. the air that day. And mm-hmm. I was just gobsmacked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was he, he basically said, oh, I tried to, you know, straighten out his to get him to straighten out his act, get more. What are whatever. you talking about? I just kept saying to myself in the car, I was yeah. like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, do, do you have serious again? Yeah. So, well, okay. yeah, uh, Rick goes to me. He goes, oh, by the way, uh, I updated your serious package. And so you can listen to Howard to get in your car. I go, why? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's you. actually it's it's good. You know, I yeah. got to. Hey, I got to stay informed. <laughs> <laughs> It'll help with the breakdown so you don't have to actually go through Mark's oh. friggin' Mark, 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 Mark's friggin's goddamn Mark, Mark Twainsian, uh, you know, write ups. <laughs> fuck it. I'll, that last clipping that I just did was torture. Yeah. Well, <laughs> imagine what it's like for the employees. Um, so I think. In the end of the day, at the end of the day, he was not a list. He never was a list, but that was the point. He was just super fucking entertaining. But even by the end of his appearances there, you could tell that there was nothing more to ring from uh, Gilbert the way Howard knew how to do it because he only had so many things he wanted to go for his cheapness. We mentioned it before. He, uh, Gilbert didn't want to talk about his family. Um, I mean, there's the one clip I remember uh, Howard, uh, Artie and uh, Gilbert laughing at the Ed McMahon audiobook. Mm hmm. And that's yes. a great clip, but it's just him laughing, and I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to include it uh, because it's not really Gilbert related, except for the fact that he's in there. Uh, and it's just well, uh, it's something Richard just, and Sal came up with. You know, it's funny to think of Gilbert in a relationship initially because just the idea of him with kids, him with a wife, mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. funny when you think of Gilbert as Gilbert on the Howard Stern show. But how long can that go on? Well, you yeah, know, like it's they, just like they, they, they've why. Done it yeah, like, okay, you're beating the horse, the horse is dead, now you're grinding the horse, yeah. now you're making glue out of the horse, it's like, fucking, try something else. But by the same token, why have David Spade on continually? I know, or Alec Baldwin, for Christ's sake, it's just like, sure. ugh. Yeah, and it's not even, it's it, even when Joan Rivers was still alive, she was still doing the show, and... um and she, I love Joan. She's funny as fuck. But he, he did the same thing with her, asking about know, Johnny Carson, Carson, asking about Edgar, you know, asking about Melissa, the stuff she sells, the blah blah blah. And you're like, you have this legend in there, and that's all you can talk about. You can't do a five minutes of cursory legwork and just go back and to ask about some other things she'd been involved with over her life. Well, Joan Rivers, th- to her credit, at least, I at least could guide the ship a little bit in 
tell new stories or, you know, funny lines and anecdotes, thank God. Otherwise, mm-hmm. we'd be left with what, you know, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So already, so the, in the same show, there's a, a time when uh, Gilbert went to do AGT and Howie Mandel tried to put him with Stern. This is post banning. And oh, yes. And so this was a little bit little, more than a little uncomfortable. So here you go. I should. It usually has to be a Howard story uh, oh, yeah, that right. gets OK. So we were doing the podcast, right? And uh, we were interviewing Howie Mandel. Okay. And he, we interviewed him backstage at America's Got Talent, right? At Radio City Music. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And in his dressing room, and he was nice and uh, and fun and and uh, Heidi Klum, who I don't know. Right. I was standing in. Okay, a little more. In her dressing room, and she was wearing just a bra. Yeah. And that was good. She's got to be your favorite German. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not wearing a clemper, Gil. <laughs> See, if Hitler would have won, it would be yeah. bro- That's all broads would look like. Let me tell you, for, for five minutes with Heidi Klum, <laughs> I would go around the country and the, deny the Holocaust <laughs> ever happened. <laughs> Okay, so here's the next part, guys. So anyway, Howie Mandel says to me, goes, oh, stick around. Uh, uh, Howard Stern's coming in. And I said, no, it's it's kind of awkward. And then I'm waiting at one. I'm talking to someone at one end of the hallway. And at the other. And then I hear. How we go, Howard? Uh-huh. Uh, we got a friend of yours like, here. See, but you haven't been on the show in a few years, so it's awkward. You don't know what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay, a little more, guys. And so I step out in the hallway, and it's a long hallway, and he's at the other end, and I'm at this end, and <laughs> it it it's like a Clint Eastwood spaghetti western. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of stay, and and neither one of us approaches the other. Wow. Yeah. Was there an awkward stare down? It it was awkward and like imagine it was less comfortable <laughs> than the Central Park Jogger. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the group of young black teenagers. <laughs> That's very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of it made it made that look comfortable. Wow. Yeah. You're saying four four black kids <laughs> accused wrongly of beating a woman near death <laughs> and being like arraigned in court was less awkward. Yes. <laughs> than you seeing Howard Stern. Especially in that fucking setting, uh, like at AGT and how Howie Mandel not understanding when Howard, you know, has given you the fucking heave ho. Uh, my, my whole thing is why uh, there's two things in the documentary, the Gilbert documentary, Stern Show clearly signed off on the footage for them to be allowed to use it in the documentary. So clearly it's not a fuck Gilbert thing. It's more along the lines of what? Just protecting your own ass. I guess so. And yeah. just the imagery of like that big giant goon at one end of the hallway and little little Gilbert, lowly Gilbert. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man. I just, well, like, why wouldn't you just, you know, why not just tell him the truth? Why not just sit or just walk over and be like honest or something? I don't know. Honesty from Stern. I know. What am I thinking? (laughs) I'm sorry. So so we're going to, so him and Artie uh, got into, they did so much, stuff together uh on one way or the other and it's amazing now to think of okay Artie's alive norm's gone saget's gone um you know gilbert's gone and i I really feel bad actually for Artie because he did love him so much but um that's a lot of Artie's comedy like pals yeah and it's really and i i I don't haven't seen a lot in the way of um tributes to him but uh, hopefully this one will do him justice but one of the best bits and i've played it for on the show (laughs) it's a short clip but they were talking about bad sports movies where people were ill cast it's paul lynn my (laughs) favorite i'm gonna hit a home run for you kid Before you die in the hospital, I'm going to hit a home run. 
<laughs> they're doing like the Babe Ruth story. If anybody's ever heard, ever, ever seen it, it's fantastic. But um, anyway, there's um, there's another the, one of the more famous rants was Stern on Ellen, which we did in our Ellen episode, our Ellen Ellen uh, Rashinding episode, which you guys may I'm sure have already heard, but it's worth hearing again. He had Gilbert on the show. Um, and then he did this, you know, obviously Howard was making good with Ellen at this point and, uh, he decided to have a Gilbert brilliantly uh, read uh, Howard's words to, you know, the people. Yes. And you know, we don't have comics on and then there's Ellen on the show. I mean, <laughs> we traded Gilbert for this fucking unfunny cunt. <laughs> and and Gary, just, but but Gary couldn't be straight up. He couldn't give him a real answer and say, "Look, we just we just can't have you on. You're too you're too hot. You're too dangerous." What a stupid excuse! Yes, it is. Just uh, an I mean, insulting, because then you would hear these other people on the show, these unfunny comics. Yeah. So in your head, you got to be like, "What the hell?" Oh yeah, it was just stupid. It was the dumbest. It was the dumbest. It was the dumbest decision they ever made, and he was beloved. I mean, when people found out he passed away, and I was, I was actually a little shocked. I mean, he was late six, what sixty eight when he passed. Poor Gilbert, rest in peace. But he, like Norm Macdonald, kept his illness secret. I never knew one thing about him. No matter how he looked, you think, well, when you get to that age, you don't exactly look like fucking. You know, you don't look like the Rock. So. Yeah. You know, and and, uh, and like like Norman McDonald, they didn't want pity, didn't want people talking about it. I find that very admirable, and um, uh, it was a bit shocking. I know you were upset for sure. I I cried. Um, yeah. I I think that the the part where you don't talk about your illness goes in line with the fact that Norm and Gilbert are genuinely interested in other people, and they genuinely want to make people laugh and mm -hmm. be a showman you know they yeah. it's not about them it's not me 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 right i mean like, you know to their audience which is thank you well, thank this, you this, this female comic tig notaro who i find about as funny as i don't know genital herpes she fucking did a show about her mastectomy or double mastectomy or something something like that i heard the concept i heard a bit of clips and I'm going, so this isn't comedy anymore. You want to do a TED Talk and call it a stand-up special and how brave it is to talk about. Well, it's not comedy is the point. It's not – she wasn't being funny. She was just talking yeah. about her life. And I go, well, you know, Florentine did a thing called um, I'm Your Savior. He talked about his girlfriend who committed suicide and she had reconnected with her um, her birth mother uh, and was life seemed to be getting better for her. And when she committed suicide, he was really, you know, obviously sh sh shook, shook up, you know, and yeah. it's a great special. If you guys really want to watch it, it's a little dated now, obviously, because the, the, the fun, the, the happy ending at the end isn't so happy because he's now divorced from that particular, uh, girl that he Cheater. talks about in the special yeah shithead and um so but the the story the narrative of the story is fantastic it's an amazing thing and it's still funny like the way the way he explained the certain parts of the situation are funny the gilbert documentary it is funny and it is poignant and it is it covers all the things the the 911 joke the um tsunami stuff it covers his family stuff with his sister Arlene, who died of breast cancer, and they show him in the hospital with her and her photography and and the closeness with him and his family. I found that really, really amazing and touching. Yep, it's a part yeah. of Gilbert that nobody really knew, and I'm so glad that they made that for that reason. Me too, and who knew? Because maybe I think I have a feeling that Dara pushed for it because because of his illness. They knew that this would be a good document. This would be something to leave behind for the kids. It is great. Yeah. So I totally wholeheartedly recommend it. But here we go with the, the Ellen rant. Read from here. Ellen DeGeneres is such a jerk. This is stuff Howard actually said. Oh, God. And the kid's okay. putting this in radar online. Ellen DeGeneres is such a jerk, Stern said, <laughs> noting that he's never been one to interfere at other people's professional opportunities <laughs> out of fear of bad karma. She would deny me my dream job because she doesn't like me personally, and that's why I told you Ellen's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that how you know all these people are such phony bullshitters. Well, yeah, fuck. 
Uh, yeah. He took things to a personal level, <laughs> referencing the openly gay comic sexuality. <laughs> and that face of hers. She, <laughs> 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 and that face of Trump her, stole that one. She looked like she smelled bad pussy. <laughs> 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 I think before she got famous, she had a lot of bad pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and that nose of her is forever crinkled. Okay. Stern said. So, uh, he wishes she had a dick. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, there are times. So this one gets a little. We're we're closing in on the end, guys. But we can't we can't go without a little bit of Rabbi Godfrey doing his shtick. So I, I included a little bit. <laughs> but Gilbert, is the young lady uh, Jewish? Will we be raising the child? Oh Jewish? yes. Yeah. What will you sing to the baby so that the baby will learn Jewish? <laughs> Do <laughs> just love it. So the last bit, guys, I'm, I took two clips from the uh, Gilbert documentary. Hopefully they'll be included in this because sometimes copyright is a bitch, but I'll do what, my best to put it in. Guys, I included a little of the documentary in the, the video because I just really got was very touching to see uh, Gilbert's relationship with these kids, especially and with Dara and their whole relationship and how they met and all that stuff. And, um, and I was happy she could make a home for him because he had all those stories about him living in the projects and being so cheap and stuff. And that she didn't try to change him. She just, you know, said, look, let's, let's kind of meet in the middle somewhere. And she allowed him to keep all of his crap and <laughs> vacuum sealed, um, you know, these, throw away things from the hotels and shit that he, mm -hmm. he hoarded because it was it was fascinating. Yes. Yeah. The tallest dinosaur in the world. When I get back to New York, we'll have to go again because I want to see that. I guess I'd like to do less road, but um, I don't see that day coming too soon. I mean, I guess you always have to do you, you have to dance with the date who brought you. Especially, especially poignant when um, you know what the relationship Stern has with his fucking kids and a grandkid he'll never acknowledge. Well, Gilbert had a really full life and a yeah. real life. Mm -hmm. You know, Howard just has such an empty, vapid existence. And mm -hmm. Gilbert clearly doesn't. No. And it's amazing to see him, like I said, with the kids. And I wanted to add that as a final thing, guys. So sorry if any of you are breaking up the Kleenex, but that happens too. This is a fantasy I have in my mind. I wish that I could bring my mother and father back to life for like, like just like a couple of minutes and go, okay, I just finished this movie with so-and-so. I'm on this TV show. Here, you can watch me walk down any block. Okay, a little more, guys. And people are coming up. They want their picture taken with me. To be able to bring them back for like, just like short moments to say to them, well, I've got two children that I named after the two of you. Oh. And that I've got a wife. Yeah, unbelievable. Who is madly in love with me. My parents would be amazed. Happy birthday. I love you. It's your problem. <laughs> love you. 
And that's about it for us, guys. We hope you guys uh, appreciated this uh, tribute the way we appreciated him. You're never going to find another one. And, 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 and to be honest, guys, you, you'll never find a guy. They don't cut him from the cloth of Gilbert because he was a true original. No one, absolutely no one was like him. Nobody. I can't think of a single comic was like uh, Gilbert. Just a standalone, amazing talent. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna miss him. So God, God rest, God rest your soul, Gilbert. May your memory be eternal. Um, we, I, from this day forward, I will be collecting as much hotel swag as I possibly can. In your honor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also condolences to Frank Santo Padre, who was his partner on the podcast, and they did a phenomenal job. There are clips you guys want to see of him singing with Dick Van Dyke. Who um, and had who and Richard Kind on the show? That's also in the documentary. Uh, Tony Orlando did a fantastic interview, saying how much he loved Gilbert, and he told some phenomenal stories, amazing stories. So please check out the episodes of his podcast if you haven't already. A lot of them are just time capsule good. So any th- closing things before we uh, wrap this one up, Sam? No, thank you guys for listening, and we love you, Gilbert. Yeah, rest in peace, brother. <laughs> 